Here's another honest review from Three Days and Trace Noches. And this time we are back in the Dominican Republic at the Sanctuary Capcana. And just like any resort, it has its pros and it has its cons. So make sure you watch this entire review before booking this resort. And if you're new to our channel, Three Days and Trace Noches is not a travel vlog or a travel agency. We just bring you honest reviews, travel tips, and information about the destinations that we go to. And your support means everything to us. So please like and subscribe. Sanctuary Capcana is located only 15 minutes from the Punta Cana Airport, which is a great plus. In fact, I do an entire video about the Punta Cana Airport and what to expect, so make sure you check that out as well. We use diamond transfers to get us from the airport to the resort, which I highly recommend. We upgraded to their VIP service, which was amazing. So I will put the link in the description below to book with them. Another option is you can contact the resort ahead of time, the concierge email, and they will also set up transportation for you. Cap Cana is located south of Punta Cana, where the more popular resorts are located. We've been there several times. But we really wanted to try the Capcana area because we heard so many wonderful things, how beautiful it is, but how very safe it is. In fact, it's located in a gated community. So you can only enter the Capcana area if you are staying at a resort, if you live there, obviously if you're transporting someone back and forth, or if you have dinner reservations at one of the public restaurants there. I was impressed with this resort before I even arrived. Now, if you follow my channel, you know I always contact the resort before I arrive to confirm a reservation, see if there are any upgrades, just ask any questions that I may have. So I called customer service, they were amazing. They actually gave me the phone number, the actual phone number to the resort, which you really don't get a lot. I also emailed concierge and they were very responsive as well. Let's start with the check-in and it's an absolute 10 out of 10. It's actually probably the best check-in I have ever had at any resort. We were staying in the castle section and I will actually go over all of the different sections in this resort during the room review. So when we arrived, they were there waiting for us, ready for us. They took all of our luggage and they knew that we were staying in the castle. So they got us a golf cart and took us over there right away. I was completely blown away by the property itself. It is so gorgeous. I think unique is a good word and you will see during this review, we took a lot of amazing footage, but as you're driving up to that castle, it's just something I have never seen at any type of resort before. And inside is just as beautiful. The lobby of the castle, it's very bright and open and just lots of windows and the views are just insane. The check-in took like five or 10 minutes tops and they come over and take your drink order. There's a beautiful bar right there, which we will show you later. And again, it was just completely seamless. And I think the best part about it, there was not a sales pitch at all. In fact, there was not a sales pitch during the entire stay. And you don't realize how much that makes a difference until it's not there. Now, if you stay in the castle, you are assigned a butler. And this is a true butler service. It's not a concierge like we've had at other resorts. In fact, it's the best butler service we've ever had at any resort, um, even better than LeBlanc in Cancun, which is rated the number one resort in that area. Now, our butler was Joan, and I'm gonna talk about the amazing butler service later in the video. But we got very lucky because our room was actually ready, even though it was early, usually check-in is at three o'clock, so we were able to go right to our room. Now there are so many different room categories at this resort, which is actually a plus, but it can be a little bit overwhelming. So before I show you the room, I wanna show you how the resort is laid out and the three different sections. So the first section is the villa section. You'll see here to the left, that also includes butler service. Then in the middle here is the suites section, which are right directly in front of the swimming pools. And then to the right is where we stayed, which was the castle section. We chose the ocean front swim out suite in the castle section and absolutely loved it. So let me show you around. I cannot room. wait to show you the tour of our room, which is we are in the castle. We have an ocean front swim out suite. So we are in 1058 and let's go bubbles.
So I already love the bathroom because it is completely private and separate from the other areas. A lot of these other resorts are doing this open bathroom bedroom concept that I just don't like. Now the bathtub could be a downside. It is on the smaller side. Also, it's not like out on a balcony with beautiful views. That didn't really affect me. I really don't use the bathtub that much, but it might be important to you. It does have the double sinks, which I love, a lot of counter space, all of the amenities that you could need. Here I'm talking about a flat iron or a curling iron, which honestly I wouldn't even bother bringing because it is so humid there. I couldn't even get a curl in my hair. So I brought my, my uh, curling iron and I could never even curl it. It also has a separate shower and separate toilet area as well, which I love. The shower was a little bit on the smaller side compared to some of the other resorts. And this is an older resort, but being in the castle, one thing that I loved was it kind of was rustic. So nothing really seemed old to us. They do have updated fixtures and the water pressure and everything worked great in the shower. And I love the separate toilet because while someone's showering, someone can use the bathroom in private. So I really did love the whole setup of the bathroom, despite that the bathtub was a little bit small and some of the fixtures were a little bit older, but it just goes with the whole castle theme and decor, which you're going to see in just a moment. Wait till you see the rest of the room. And it had a whole walk-in closet. So tons of room for your clothes. I know this is a huge honeymoon spot, so a lot of people spend more than seven days here. You know, it might bring a lot of different clothes and there is enough space for all of that. There is an iron, also the typical safe in there as well. Now this room was huge, which I loved and there was tons of space in the living room and in the bedroom area. And I loved all the decor that they had. It really matched, you know, the theme of the castle. And you felt just like you were maybe in your own home. Like you felt like you were actually in a house, which I really, really loved. Over here is the mini bar section, and it's a good time to talk about the water. I think most people know, do not drink the tap water ever. Even when brushing your teeth, you should use this bottle of filtered water, and they will bring you as much as you want, especially when you're making the coffee. They have here a coffee machine. You always want to use the filtered water. If you need ice, the butler will get you ice, basically get you anything that you want. Now here is the mini bar mini fridge. This is kind of one downside. They really only have uh, beer, water, and sodas. However, the butler will get you whatever you want. So if you want snacks, if you want something else in the room, we actually bought our own bottle of liquor at the airport after watching some videos. So I definitely suggest that because he will bring you drinks, but they won't, it won't be a full size bottle of liquor. And the bedroom area was equally as beautiful. I love the decor, the big chunky blanket, and everything just felt very solid. The walls felt very solid. Maybe it was just the mental thing of being in the castle, but it was very quiet as well. And we didn't really hear too much. Sometimes up ahead, you could hear some people moving furniture, but it wasn't late at night or really early in the morning. They also had a TV in the room and it did have a lot of channels. If you follow me, you know, I really don't watch TV while I'm on vacation, but definitely they at least had something there. If you are a TV watcher or a movie watcher, they had a lot of different options. One little issue I would say was the plugs in the bedside table really didn't charge the phones or our computer. So we had to use some of the outlets on the floor, which again, wasn't the biggest deal in the world. Also with the lights, you have to insert the room key. There's a slot right by the door to get the lights to work. So that took um, a little bit to figure out. And it's a good time to mention that there are no bracelets here, which I actually prefer. You use a room key. Um, which I know you have to keep track of it. So that would be something hopefully they could get to a digital key maybe in the future. Uh, but I love that you don't have to worry about wearing a bracelet. And also just when you go to the restaurants, you just give them your room number. Now it's time to show you the outside and it's so beautiful. And normally I don't go for the swim out suite. One, because I really like to be higher up. I love that ocean view. And two, I tend to have reactions to chlorine. However, these pools are saltwater pools here in the castle. So I definitely wanted to try it because I love the idea of waking up and just being able to get right into the water. Now, 1058 was the very last suite, which did have some advantages. One is you only have 
one room next to you to the right. To the left is a restaurant, but it's only open at night. It's not very loud at all, and most people are inside dining anyway. However, we wanted to be closer to the ocean, so we did request to change our room, and we got very lucky because there was a suite open that was closer to the ocean, which is 1050, so we're gonna show you that room as well. Now the size and the layout of the room is exactly the same. The difference really was just the view from the outside. We liked being closer to the ocean, seeing more of the ocean, and having that little access closer to the beach. Now there really is no beach over there, so let me tell you that. It's not a beach that you sit on. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit of that in a bit. And you can't really swim in the ocean, but we just liked the view a lot better. One other note is that there's one suite to the right that does not have an outdoor area with furniture. Again, you can't request rooms, but you can ask them to put in the notes that you want um, one of the suites that has outdoor furniture, or maybe that doesn't matter to you because then you'll have the one closest to the ocean. The water is very cold, so it's not a heated pool. And someone also asked about the noise level and it's very quiet. We probably use the pool more than anyone else that I saw, and you do have access to the whole pool. So um, you can swim up and down, which I did one day, and actually all of the suites are able to use this pool, but no one really did. The only people that used it were the people that were staying right there in the swim out suites. And here's the small section of beach I talked about as well. Now, if you are considering staying in this section, I'm gonna do a complete separate video about this room. We also got to tour another room, an oceanfront honeymoon suite, and show you more of the property and grounds. So definitely be on the lookout for that. So if you see there to the left, it looks like a little hut. Well, that was actually a bar and restaurant that belonged solely to the castle section that was destroyed in the hurricane. So they are planning on rebuilding this little area and making it really nice, which would be a great addition to the castle section. Um, also, they are currently building like a little pier out. With that being said, there was a little construction going on during the day. You could hear them sawing. So it didn't bother us at all, but I figured it was worth mentioning. Now off to the pools and the beaches. And if you follow me, you know I give very detailed reviews. So just stick with me. I wanna give you as much info and detail as possible. Let's start with the pools and they are a nine out of 10. And if you follow me, you know that the pools are not a priority for me, but I still pay attention to them because I know that they are a priority for a lot of you all out there. I love that this had a main big pool with a really nice swim up bar but then it also had different surrounding pools that you could go off to if you wanted something a little bit more quiet or a little bit more private. Another plus of staying at the castle section is that it has its own pools for people that are staying there. So in addition to the swim out suite section, upstairs by the ocean bar, it has a beautiful pool right next to the bar, lots of seating where you could just sit, relax, and take in that view all day long. I also did not see a lot of people getting up early to save seats. I'm sure it happens because it happens at every single resort, but there seemed to be enough seating everywhere that you went. Now the resort was at 65% capacity, so maybe when it's at 100% capacity, it's a little bit different, but I just love that it wasn't overcrowded and it seemed like everybody could get seats with no issues. They also had poolside service, they had a poolside grill, um, also by the bar, which I will talk about later. They had the swim up bar. So really the only reason for the nine out of 10 is because of the lack of activities. Now they do have activities at the pool. They had some water aerobics and volleyball, but this is not a party pool at all. So if you're looking for something more of that vibe, in fact, we met the general manager and he said they were just bought by luxury brands and they are really trying to tone it down into a sanctuary retreat where people can just come and relax. So if you are looking for a resort that has that party pool atmosphere, this is not going to be the resort for you. Off to the beach, my favorite part, and I'm giving it a nine out of 10. I was actually gonna give it a 10 out of 10, but I went for the nine because there is just one little thing that I know will be a contention with many people, although it did not bother me at all, and that is it's a very small stretch of beach. So if you are someone who likes to take long walks on the beach, this might not be the resort for you. However, I thought it was perfect because I don't like to take long walks on the beach. I like to walk a little bit, but I like to sit on the beach 
and the water was beautiful the temperature was perfect it's not rough at all and the advantage of it being a small beach area is that they can control the seaweed so they had a nice barrier so that the beach was always very clean they had a ton of seating so even if you weren't right up front you still felt like you were right there because of the small setting and the service was amazing happy boy shout out to happy boy all of the servers they set up your area put the umbrellas up bring you water bring you drinks whatever you need so i absolutely loved it, it was actually one of my favorite beach experiences and they also have cabanas if you wanted to rent those i think they're around 250 dollars a day if you wanted a little bit of special treatment or an elevated experience and if you're someone like me that likes to swim out a little bit towards the barrier it is rocky so you might want to bring water shoes but if you stay in shore for the most part it's not rocky at all time for some food and drinks and i'm giving it an eight out of ten so if you're new to my channel i need to give a disclaimer because i am not a foodie so i always say when i am making the food reviews it may not be the best review of it because food is not the priority to me when i go on vacation of course i want quality food when i do eat and i think sanctuary does a really good job overall in providing a lot of different options and overall the quality like i said is about an eight for breakfast, they had two options. They had the main buffet or they had room service. If you are staying in the castle, the room service took a long time. So I don't know if it was just the castle or if that's just the case in general. Usually at all-inclusive resorts, that is the case. So my suggestion would be to order it the night before, especially if you know what time that you wanna eat the next morning. The buffet was located in Casa Bella and it's from 6.30 in the morning until 11 a.m. And it looks like it's on the smaller side, but they really do have everything that you would want. So made to order eggs and omelets, pancakes, French toast. They had Dominican dishes. They had a lot of different um, egg and meat dishes. They had salads and uh, deli meats and cheeses, and they had pastries and they even had juices. And I actually like the fact that they served you and you couldn't serve yourself. So they still have the covers over the food from COVID. Um, just because I think it's better food safety. It's not out in the open air where their bugs are flying or people are coughing into it or their hair is flying into it. So I actually thought that that showed better food safety. Now this also becomes the lunch buffet and I would say the experience is very similar. It's not the best buffet that I've ever had at an all-inclusive resort, but they certainly have enough options. Now the other options for lunch are the Blue Marlin, and also the beachside grill, or you can do room service again. I could not wait to eat at the Blue Marlin. I love a resort that has an oceanfront restaurant, and this went right over the water. The views were amazing, and we had a lunch there. This is a seafood restaurant. Very, very good. The service was amazing. The drinks were amazing, and you just can't beat that view. I also love the beachside grill right there next to the beach they had burgers fries wings tacos chips and salsa and guacamole and we didn't have the burgers but everyone said the burgers were amazing the wings were great french fries again just i love having that right there by the beach if you want to grab something you don't want to sit down necessarily and have lunch so they have a few options for dinner at night. One are the a la carte restaurants, which includes the steakhouse, Italian, the Japanese, and the Blue Marlin. And the Blue Marlin isn't open every single night, so you do have to check the schedule for that. We did not eat there for dinner. We only ate there for lunch. The steakhouse, we had reservations, but decided not to eat there um, because we really don't eat steak. We did ask around. Everyone said it was just, you know, okay. The Italian restaurant we really liked. I think it's probably their best restaurant there. And then the Japanese was typical, you know, hibachi style fun and the food was, was good. The other option I absolutely loved and really sold me on this resort and that was the little sanctuary town. It's actually open to the public, but if you're staying there, you can eat at any of the restaurants except for the Spanish restaurant, which is extra. So they have a pizza place, they have sushi, they had a burger uh, place. They also had a sweet shop with ice cream and desserts. So one of my favorite foods is pizza, but I tend to eat mostly clean. So when I'm on vacation, I really look forward to having pizza. And this was some of the best pizza that I've had at an all-inclusive resort. In fact, I wanted to give the food a 10 out of 10, but I know that most people don't eat like I do. 
So I just loved the whole concept of the town. The fact that if you didn't want to sit down and have a formal dinner, you could grab a pizza or some sushi or burgers. And then they also had a place for desserts. And the drinks and cocktails were great as well. I was surprised by their liquor selection. I've never seen absolute grapefruit, which is my favorite at a resort. They had that, they had Grey Goose, um, and just really a wide variety and very high-end liquor as well. I will say they don't always make the cocktails with real juice, so lots of it's concentrated. So maybe that's one area that they could improve, but I would definitely recommend going for like the pina coladas, the rum drinks, the frozen drinks. They are absolutely amazing. And I also loved the coffee shop that they had in the main lobby, which is also beautiful. Yalitza was normally there and she always recognized us. And I loved the coffee. I love the coffee in the Dominican more than any place that I've been. And I just love the whole atmosphere of it. So that was another plus of this resort. And this is a great lead in to the service, which is definitely a 10 out of 10. Now I know this is a long review, stick with me. I'm almost done, but I have to shout out some of the amazing staff members because they really went out of their way to get to know us, to recognize us, to make us feel special. And it wasn't just us, they were doing that with everyone who was at the resort. And there were so many amazing employees, I could never mention them all here. I will mention them in the TripAdvisor review, and that's a great tip if you are on vacation, write down the names of employees that are going above and beyond and mention them in the TripAdvisor review because usually it does help them out. And the butler service even takes it up a notch, so I definitely recommend staying in the villa or the castle section to get the butler service. And ours was Jawan, and it is definitely the best butler service that we've ever had, and it is a true butler service, which means that they will bring you whatever you need or do whatever they can to make sure that you have an amazing vacation. So you communicate via WhatsApp. One time, I guess we asked for ice or towels. We needed directions one time. He arranged transportation for us. And then even if he's not available, once you go to the lobby, for instance, Vienna Iris, one of the girls at the front, if she sees you and you need a ride to the main lobby, they are jumping in the cart. Anybody is taking you over there. So they all work together and it really does elevate the entire experience. And now for the only, I would say, downside of this resort are the activities and things to do. And I have to give it a seven out of 10. Like I mentioned earlier, they have been recently bought out by luxury brands, which means they are really elevating to more of a luxury resort and toning down the party atmosphere. So during the day, they definitely have a lot of activities. You can download that Sanctuary app and they list them every single day but it is not a party vibe during the day at all. They had activities like water aerobics, yoga on the paddle board, volleyball. I think they had dance lessons maybe one day, um, but nothing super high energy. In fact, one day we went off the resort during the day, we took a cruise with skate park, which I'm gonna do an entire separate video on. We didn't go to the park itself, but we just took the cruise and I definitely recommend it. One thing they do not have here is non-motorized water sports, probably because the beach is so small and it's barricaded off. So if that's something that you like, they don't have that here. Now at night, they do have some live music. They have a little bit of entertainment. So the first night we were there, they did have some shows in the disco area. They have karaoke, which you know is my favorite. And then they had a DJ. But then after that, there really wasn't much, probably because maybe it was Monday and Tuesday. The club was open, but no one was really there. In fact, the last night we wanted a little bit more of a party vibe. So we went into downtown Punta Cana, which we were really surprised how fun it was, how safe it was. So I'm going to do another whole video just about this experience in case you're interested in possibly going off the resort into downtown Punta Cana. Now they also have a spa, which we did the hydrotherapy one day and the staff was great, but it's definitely showing a lot of wear and tear in the spa area. So I loved that it was bright and it had an outdoor area as well, which if you were getting a service, you could hang out by the pool, but the hydrotherapy section was definitely small. And again, the facility needs an update. However, I did like that the couples could do it together because we've been to some resorts where they can't and the staff again was amazing and they do offer any service that you want so they had a lot of different variety of services and they had really cool huts in the back so you could do a couple massages kind of back there in the huts overall i highly recommend this resort in fact i can't wait to go back to this resort except for these three reasons if these are deal breakers for you so 
Number one is the beach. If you like a long stretch of beach to walk along, then you will not like the beach here. Number two is if you like to party. This is really not a party resort, so they don't have the parties at the pool. And at night, they did have a little bit, but you can tell they are trying to tone it down. With that being said, downtown Punta Cana was amazing and it's only 30 minutes away. Number three is the spa. So if you're someone who really likes to spend time at the spa, loves that luxurious ambience, while they have all of the services that you want and the staff is great, the facilities themselves are a little bit small, a little bit, I guess, dilapidated is a good word, maybe needs a little bit of an update. But since it's located in the castle, it kind of goes along with the theme. So if you don't mind a little bit of a rustic ambience, then you'll have no problem with it. But what set this resort apart for me, even though obviously it had some flaws like every other resort does, was the uniqueness of the property. So you really felt like you were in another world from the castle to the villas and just the views and all of the character that this resort had. And I will be doing a lot of other videos on this resort, so stay tuned. I know this was a long one. I'm gonna do some shorter ones, but I hope you found it helpful. And if you've been there and you can add anything to this review, please put them in the comments below. And we do answer all comments and questions. And please like this video and subscribe to our channel and follow us at Three Days and Trace Noches while we keep bringing you honest, to the point, information, reviews, and travel tips about the destinations that we go to. And we're really excited. We have a lot of trips planned for the rest of the year. You can also find us on Instagram and TikTok, and we just appreciate your support so much. Yeah,